Welcome to the Empower Me Show with Pam Bright. This show is all about honoring you as a spiritual being, having a human experience. You are here for a reason, and it's no mistake that you are here on earth right now. Spirit has guided you to this very moment in time, so you could hear the messages Pam is about to share with you. She is a multi-dimensional healer, light language channel, transformation coach, wife and mother committed to helping you discover the tools and practices to empower you to live the best life you can. You get to choose the spirit path you take. You can connect to the spiritual guidance already all around you. Get ready to live a fully empowered life. This is the Empower Me Show. Hello, this is the Empower Me Show. I am Pam Bright. I am your host for this program. Thank you for tuning in one more time to this hour of power, as they say. Uh, This is the time for transformation and your spiritual journey and whatever that means for you. So thank you once again for tuning in. I know there are many of you that have tuned in through the years to see me here and see what is being presented for you and your spiritual journey. And it's always a pleasure to connect to you, my spiritual family, my sisters and brothers and uh, beings of light on this planet, on this journey with me. So thank you for tuning in. I say those of you who are not identifying with male or female, welcome to this show. Um, I am transitioning into the world of the other. And so um, welcome to those of you who don't identify with that, those titles, if you will, um, of male or female, but are exploring what those other terms might me, mean for you. So welcome to this planet <laughs> called Earth that we all are on. Um, and there's always an interesting twist to who we get to explore ourselves to be in these human meat suits, as they say. I think that's a kind of a crude term, but it kind of applies to where we're going um, on on our journeys of exploration. So I know I definitely have had my share of exploration in the world of Pam (laughs) and what that means. So before we get going any further... I want to ground us. I want to get us to this moment in time so that we can let go of anything that's been prior to this moment. This moment at, according to my clock, it's, I can't see it on my screen, but I see it on my phone and on the wall, which it says it's 12.05-ish right now. So we are going to ground ourselves we are going to recenter and let go of anything that's been before right now. <sighs> so you can go ahead and just close your eyes if you can. If you can just be here now. Let, letting go of driving if you can. Pull over to the side of the road and just be here as we ground. If you can. If you don't. If you can't do that and you need to focus on the road, then do that. Or if you're working and need to be focused on uh, what you're doing and just listen to my voice, you can do that as well. But I am going to close my eyes because when I close my eyes and focus on my breathing, it helps me to go within, which is really important for me as I let go of my stress, because I have it. It's, I am experiencing it in my world right now, in my family, in my life, in the world around me. And so breathing helps me to bring this focus to the center of who I am. So I invite you to do the same. And as I am breathing, I'm also holding this selenite crystal uh, this this wand, if you will, the, the wand that reminds me that I am light. 
And I can visualize this selenite light coming right into the center of my spine, connecting me to the spiritual energies above me, to the light beings above me, to the star beings, to the God of my understanding, and bringing that light all the way down into my body and then through my body down into the earth plane, into the core of who she is, our Gaia, Mother Earth. And so I just give you that visual of that, of that rod of power, that, that straight arrow, that line of power from the earth all the way up through my body and then up to the cosmos. We connect to the tree nations, the tree people, as the Native American Indian people call it, the, our ancestors call it, the tree beings, the creepy crawlies, the winged ones, the birds of the air, the algae in the oceans, all of the cosmos, the Milky Way, as well as all the other galaxies that are around us. We connect with all of it. And using our breath, we allow ourselves to expand out from who we are, out and connecting to all of our other brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, galactic ones, and using my bright language, which comes through me and out to others, I allow my native tongue, my connection to the spiritual energies of the world, out to come through my mouth, out to you, and to connect to your core. E la ta he se ki abahi. These are also called codes of light, connecting in with the symbology of the codons of the world. Neza de de iku baba ye shi shi ya. Keluku de sana mana ye. Ane sana ye ye ya mama ye. Keuku ku ala che che ye. Creator of all that is, the one who lives and breathes within all things, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for who you are as the spiritual one, the master of the universe. I believe that you created everything that exists here on this planet. You who are the energy of the universe, this universe, and all the universes combined. We thank you for holding us all in place and reminding us that we are all connected. When we've come down to the quantum level of existence, we are all one. And so we bring this unity into this now, and we ask that all of the spiritual energies that want to teach us today come into this moment with us. Thank you. <sighs> with another breath and another sigh, another sound. <laughs> I invite you to come back into this moment. Open your eyes if you had your eyes closed and come back to awareness. Welcome, welcome back. So every time that you tune into this program with me, you will hear some kind of momentary um, meditation, auditory, visual. You get the visual here with the ocean and the rainbow and me and the energies that want to come in. So you will get that every time you tune in. So welcome back. 
Thank you for those of you who are coming from the U.S., tuning in, as well as those of you who are coming from other countries. Thank you for tuning in now and in the future at another time. Today, today we're talking about the butterfly journey. We're talking about the messiness of life, <laughs> the unpredictability of life, the uh, going along in life and thinking you've got it all figured out and you know exactly what you're doing and the tra trajectory that you're on. And then what happens when it all changes? Hmm. I bring in my own personal experience for you, as well as what I am picking up energetically in the cosmos, on the earth plane, with other people, and whatever energies want to come in as we're going along in this program. So all of that together brings me to right now, which is that... I'm having some family crisis in my personal life. And I say crisis because it's 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 a little scary for my husband and I and our child. Um, I, I'm guessing it's a little scary for my child since I haven't heard from them <laughs> in a while. Just to give you a kind of an overview, not going to go into detail about that, but uh, to just let you know that life happens. And when life happens and sends us some curveballs, um, we still got to be here in a physical body because we chose this. So what do we do about it? How do we have the wits about us to be able to function in a job, in a family system where we have communication or non-communication, um, uh, paying rent and paying bills and 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 getting groceries and um, making plans and all of that. How do we and how do we know on our spiritual journey if we're on the right track? Those are the questions that are up for me right now. How do I know that I'm on the right track? How do I know I'm making the right choices? How do I know that? I don't need to make a drastic change that might take me out of the game. Hmm. How do I know? For me personally, what I do is that I have to pause. So in the pausing, I check in with my physical body. What's going on with my physical body? Am I still here? Yes, I've got I've got all my limbs. I, my heart's still beating. My blood is still flowing. Um, I check in with my breathing and I slow it down a little bit. Because when I'm stressed, guess what? My blood pressure goes up. And for me, that's a danger sign. That's not a great thing when my, when my, my blood pressure spikes. Because I personally have had a real rocky road with my blood pressure and my respiration in my life. So... For me personally, I need to slow down. I need to regroup. I need to breathe peacefully and calmly. So that's what I do. Uh, for those of you who are also in a place of uncertainty and questioning and like, ah, I don't quite know what I'm doing, please call me. Call me here on this, on this show at 1-800-930-2819. And I would love to talk to you about what's going on for you, what are your challenges, what you could you use some prayer support with or some healing work or some guidance, that would be great to hear from you. <laughs> That's what I'm here for is to help you and all of us together, like we're in it together. This isn't just me, a talking head on this program. This is me reaching out to you saying, hey, uh, I need you, I need you. I need you to know that you're not alone. I need you to know that you aren't, you don't have to figure it out all by yourself. I need you to know that I'm here and available, even though my life isn't looking really like it's <laughs> all together. I'm not all together. I don't look all together. I don't feel all together. I am actually wearing a peace and love shirt 
Let me show you for a reason, because it's important to know that peace and love is what it's all about. Even when it feels like it's falling apart. Uh, so we, I grounded us. I got us to this moment in time. And I have, as always, I have a card deck with me. And the card deck that I chose is the Oracle of the Seven Energies today. Why seven? What's special about seven? So I'm going to read a little bit about that for you. Um, this is the Colette Baron Reed is her name. That's who she is. Um, and she wrote this, these created these cards for the wisdom of the energy of seven can be seen in cultures all over the world. So apparently seven is a power number from what I've heard. Seven is a power number. Many of you may connect to the number seven. Um, its influence is reflected in the way you think, how you make decisions, what you encounter within, and the conditions of your world. So I don't know about you, but I'm experiencing a lot of turmoil in the world, energetically, just it's everywhere, and also in my own life. So let's tune into the number seven here and see what... This beautiful book, the numerology book that I have, has to tell us about the number seven. And it might help you a little bit. I hope it will. I hope you'll get something from this hour of power. All right. So perception and wisdom is what we're looking at with the number seven. The number seven is the number of solitude and contemplation. So, yeah. Sometimes when life is in turmoil and we're, everything's unpredictable, what happens for us as a collective society is we tend to say, I want to be alone. Just leave me alone. Leave me alone until I figure it out. Leave me, leave me alone until I have an answer. <laughs> Just leave me alone because I'm vulnerable. That's the tendency. And what I say is that is actually the opposite of what the world, the, the energies of the divine feminine are saying to us today is we need to do the opposite of what our natural impulse is. Because <laughs> when we say, I want to be alone and I need you to go away, inside a lot of times what's really happening is please don't leave me. Please don't go away. Please don't, don't, don't abandon me. Please don't leave me to figure it all out by myself. Right? Our thoughts sometimes are what creates the barrier between, between each other. So give yourself permission to not be alone, especially when you're really vulnerable. Looking to the inner self. So I'm always about looking inside first, asking my heart. Asking my heart what it needs. Asking my, my inner sanctuary here, what do you need right now? What do you need to feel safe? What do you need to move forward? What do you need to do to take care of yourself? When I say you, I'm asking my heart, but I'm also asking my heart to check in with my physical body. What do I need right now? Am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I lonely? Am I tired? Am I afraid? Am I confused? What's going on right now? And then I listen. Sometimes it helps, especially if there's a lot of noise in my head, in my brain. My brain's going a million miles an hour. <laughs> my mind is going crazy. Sometimes it helps if I have a piece of paper and a pen. 
or a pencil or a crayon even, <laughs> whatever I can find, get my thoughts out. Um, you can do it on a computer too, but it's too easy to erase it. So <laughs> I use pen and paper because, you know, I'm old school. I like to have a, you know, a physical copy. Like I like physical books. Um, it helps to write it out. And then I can see it visibly. So I listen. I, I talk to my inner self and I ask questions. So the seven, the seven is the power card where we get to, we get to look at, you know, we look, get to look at our inner world. We get to look at connecting to the spiritual. We get to look at the esoteric. Seven. Oh, there's seven chakras. Okay, we've got our base chakra. We the number one. We've got the is Or we've got our. fifth chakra which is which is our fifth chakra oh our throat chakra is number five we've got our third eye which is number six and we've got our our seventh chakra which is at the top of the head which is our our chakra so we've got seven hmm for some reason i have had my hand up that's interesting. It just put my hand up. Well, apparently putting my hand up for the sky to the connect to the energies of the of the sky. So um what else can I tell you about this? Relationships, the cosmos, so really connecting to the energies of cosmos. You know, what do the star beings have to tell us? What what do our ancestors have to tell us? today um you know what do our animal friends have to tell us today really allowing ourselves to connect in with something other than just ourselves so i mentioned in my advertisement for this show that i am very connected to the butterfly journey and I'm aware that there are three distinct phases of the butterfly journey, including the caterpillar, which, which is where it starts. The caterpillar, when you think about who the caterpillar is, the caterpillar is very connected to the earth. It's low to the ground. It's got a lot of legs, so it can go quite fast if it wants to, but it doesn't. It goes actually quite slowly, like a turtle, likes to be close to the ground and it likes to take its time it's got eight little legs <laughs> so it can move and it can it can you know get to places that some of us can't it's low to the ground and it's smaller uh, but it's very close to the ground and it it and it is gets to investigate you know, gets to investigate the leaves. It gets to investigate the dirt. It gets to investigate the bark of the tree. You know, it its lifespan, I don't remember what its lifespan is, but it's not very long. It doesn't live for very long. For it... body, And then it, it, it deconstructs itself... <laughs> And it wraps itself up into this cocoon and actually dematerializes and becomes this, this uh, chrysalis. So this middle phase of this butterfly journey is the deconstruction piece. 
And the deconstruction piece often is messy and unpredictable and can be very scary. Recently and, and right now, my life is a little messy. Things are unpredictable. Um, I don't know what's going to happen from day to day. And this phase of the journey, I've been living this journey my whole life, um, this butterfly journey. Those of you who are living in these times have your own journey and you connect to, you know, whatever the symbols are for you that really work for you. For me, it's the butterfly journey. And right now in my life, it feels like I'm in the chrysalis and that I don't know what's, I know a lot's going on out here. There's a lot of players, but I don't know exactly what's happening inside the cocoon, inside me, inside the trans with the transformation that's occurring i don't really have any control about what's outside my chrysalis and so i'm being forced not really because i chose it but i'm being forced to just be just be with the messiness of life right now ah <sighs> And it's not very comfortable. Hmm. It's not very comfortable, but it is what it is. And I've done this journey enough times to know that there is, there is a butterfly that's emerging once again. But in this moment, I can't force it to happen. Any of you who are tuning in, for the first time, you may have just turned this program on and, and you're seeing my face on Transformation Talk Radio. This is the Empower Me Show with Pam Bright. I am Pam. I'm talking about the butterfly journey for those of you who are just tuning in. And it's a messy process. So um, <laughs> if you'd like to explore this with me, um, there are ways to contact me here right live. The phone number's on your screen. If you're not on a screen and you're just listening, on um, maybe it's on Spotify or you're driving and you're listening and you can't see my face or tune in that way, but you're listening, the phone number is 1-800-930-2819 if you want to call in. Uh, if you want to type in, if you are listening or you're on, on a, a laptop that you can... Um, Look at transformationtalkradio.com. There's a chat line um, text somewhere on there, and you can type it in to the chat line and ask me a question or say a comment or talk about your own journey. That's another way to connect live. Uh, if you want to connect after this program, you can go to brightbutterflynetwork.com and connect to me that way. And we can just have a chat, right? This is the time. <laughs> this is what I do for a living. So I'd love to know kind of what's up for you um, in this time of space. Um, okay, creator. I, again, am at a loss of what to do next for these beautiful people that are tuning in. My sense is that they're they're a little lost too and aren't really sure what they're doing. Otherwise they wouldn't be tuning in. <laughs> they wouldn't be tuning in to this program because that's the sense that I get about this program is that it, it calls to those that need to hear my voice and need to hear the voice of the ancestors and the, the animal spirits and the star beings and these are the seekers. These are the ones that need some answers. These are those that might be afraid. Those of you who are in that category, I understand. And I am here. 
I am the voice of your creator, your God. I'm the voice of your ancestors. I'm the voice of the stars. I'm the voice of your animals. I'm the voice that can cut through the noise of your own head sometimes. <laughs> so those of you in that category, I am here for you. I'm here with you, beside you. Let me help you. Let me nurture you. Let me witness you. Let's do this together. All right, so I'm going to get a card for us. Whatever the card is, is going to be perfect. I don't know who needs this card, but I've got it right here. <laughs> so again, these are the seven energies. Oracle deck from Colette Baron reed So this is for the collective. Okay, so we have the Spirit of Gratitude. It's coming in, this beautiful flower. It looks kind of like a lotus flower. And it's on the top of this person's head. This person's head, the cap of it, seventh chakra has just been taken off. And this flower is coming in. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see an ear there. So it's a head that has a flower there. And it's the spirit of gratitude. Gratitude is a practice that really opens up the world to stop the noise, <laughs> the chatter that tends to get in the way of being able to move forward. Even in the darkest of times, even in the most despair, even in those moments when I don't know what to do next. I can bring in gratitude. Gratitude for my, sometimes it's, hey, I'm grateful that I woke up this morning. I'm grateful that I can speak. I'm grateful that I can open my eyes and see you. I'm grateful that I had a place to sleep today and that I stayed warm. I was able to have clothes on my back. I'm grateful that I'm able to walk. I'm grateful for my heartbeat. I would recommend a gratitude journal for you. Those of you who are listening that uh, want to start this practice of gratitude. So in order to bring gratitude in, especially if it seems far away for you, again, I'll walk you through this and you can take as much of it as it works for you and you can create your own practice. But I would start with just closing my eyes once again and focusing in on my breath. I like to put my hand on my heart so that I, again, can quiet my mind and get centered. And I ask, what can I be grateful for today? What is one thing higher self of mine, higher wisdom. Give me one thing that I can be grateful for today. And then listen, ask and listen. For me, what I hear is my breath. I'm grateful for my breath. I'm grateful that I have sunshine today. I'm grateful for this 
beautiful shirt that I'm wearing with stars and the peace sign. Here's the peace sign <laughs> and the stars. I'm grateful that I was able to go to the Ringo Starr concert. I'm grateful for crystals and gemstones that remind me that we're all connected. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on. So it will keep growing if you allow yourself to just do this practice of gratitude every day. And sometimes you got to really reach for something to be grateful for because as human beings, we can tend to focus on the negative and focus on the problems and focus on <laughs> the, the things that aren't working in our lives. So I invite you to actually reach deep, pull it out, right? You might even have to make it up. Like, I don't know what I can be grateful for, but I'm grateful that I can practice this this gratitude, even if I don't feel it. Try it out, people. Try it out. So I know those of you who are listening would like to talk to me. I know you would, or you're like, nah, I don't want to talk to you, but I'm listening. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Just know that I'm not... I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to make you wrong. I'm not going to call you out. I'm simply asking and requesting that we connect because this is what I love to do is to connect, right? And it'd be awesome to have a physical person on the other end of the phone or in a text, right? What do you have to be grateful for? What do we want to talk about? What are you challenged by? You know, don't keep it in. Don't be a secret. I did that for years. And now I'm like, no, you know what? I'm not going to be a secret anymore. I, I, I'm tired of living alone. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, it's unpredictable. Yeah, life is messy. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah, I'm, I'd like to have it all in a nice little compact unit. <laughs> that I could count on every single day, but it's not like that right now. <laughs> it is not like that. So here's another one, which is perfect to hear, okay? <laughs> this one is healing the heart. Healing the heart. Healing the heart. So what is it that's hurting you today? What is going on that is getting in the way of gratitude? Yes, I have pain in my heart today. Yes, it... Uh... Okay, so here's what's true, everyone, okay? Those of you who have tuned into my show love to hear from me on a personal note. So here's what's true. I have a child that I adore. I adore this child. Her, their name's Nova. And this child is challenged. They're 19. And they don't, they're, they're, they're living their life and trying to figure out how to grow up. What does that look like? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> now, this is all my interpretation of what's going on for them. But as a mother, I'm intricately connected, right? I'm connected on the DNA level <laughs> with this person. They came out of my body. So um, I know who they are on, on some levels. So this is all that I'm get receiving from them energetically. And my heart is hurting for this person right now. My heart is hurting at the separation between this person and myself and this person and my, and my husband and this person with 
other people that love this 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 child of mine. And with every other person in my life and every other person that I know and every other person that is on this planet, I have zero control over that. I have zero control over you. I have zero control over my child. I have zero control over anybody else but myself. And sometimes I don't even have control over myself. So <laughs> that this is the journey. This is the butterfly journey. This is the spiritual experience of being human. What the heck do we do with this thing called the human journey? How are we supposed to be in this world? Who am I and what am I here to do? Those are two very basic questions that every single human being experiences as a human being. Who are you and what are you here to do? Let's talk about that. What is that about? Who are you and what are you here to do? You want to talk about it? You want to explore that with me? I'd love to do that. I'd love for us to find out together. Let's play together in this world of curiosity. So we have 15 minutes left, folks. Uh, one, at least one of you has said that you wanted to call me. So this is the time to do that. If you tune in and you're listening, it's 1-800-930-2819. Love to talk to you. Um, somebody else has said, yeah, I, 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 I got to just write in. I don't know how to navigate the whole system of finding you live. Um, so you can type in. Okay. Oh, I got a chat message from somebody. Let me look. Let me look. Okay. So Anne, hello. I was just thinking about you. She says, I've been on this journey, but I wish that I knew about my spirit guides and angels when I was younger. It would have been a great support for me, but now I that I have tools such as yourself, it gives me some faith, hope, and support. I am grateful. Gratitude helps me shift out of fear at any moment. Thank you, Anne. Thank you for writing in. And yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I didn't know about spirit guides either as a child. I came from uh, a Lutheran home. My family, um, my mom and dad, um, were, were Lutheran Christians. And in the Christian tradition, if you're not Christian and you don't know about the different parts of the Christian tradition, there are different, what are different sects, S-E-C-T-S, -E I think they're called, different parts of that religion. And they all kind of branched off and, and created their own kind of rituals together so presbyterians and baptists and lutherans and you know those are all different sects of the lutheran world and so they all got their own churches um and so the church the lutheran church my experience of it um was that it was very specific to certain hymns and certain um certain words and certain ways of being like communion. Um, and anyway, that world, um, in that world, there was one person in the church that was allowed to get the message from God, which was the pastor. Okay. And other people would go to Bible study and they'd learn that way. And they do did that for centuries. Right. And 
that religion didn't talk about spirit guides, didn't really even talk about angels. Um, in the Bible, it talks about that God would come in the form of a, you know, a fire in a bush or would come in the form of an angel. You know, they used to have in the old, olden times, quote unquote, <laughs> they would have angelic presence. So it does talk about it in the Bible, but it's pretty much a mystery as far as, you know, that it's a normal thing. Today in 2024, those of us who are on the spiritual journey are opening to, oh, spirit guides are absolutely real. I connect to them on a regular basis. Sometimes they come in forms of an animal or they come in the forms of uh, connecting to a tree or they come in dreams um, and the angelic realm is very prevalent now. They are very real. Many of us have visitations. There are ETs, if you will, or, you know, the, the galactic beings that are making themselves known now that I don't know if it was happening when Jesus was on the planet. I believe it probably was, but there was a lot of darkness at that time. And so, when Jesus came to earth and, and held this spirit of unconditional love, um, that was very foreign to many, many people. I believe that's why he was crucified is because he said he knew that he and God were one. <laughs> and so he was killed for that. Um, that's my interpretation of that. And that's only my experience. So you know, <laughs> take it for what it is. You have your own experience of that world. But yes, many of us come from a life of, you know, either no religion or religion that we didn't relate to. Um, or, you know, some of us could really relate to connecting to nature. And that was our form of spirituality. So, we all come from different walks of life. And what, what Anne was saying was she wished she'd known about these things when she was young. Yes, my life, it would have made my life, I think, a lot different and maybe even a lot better. I don't know. But, you know, all of that world from when I was young brought me to where I am today. So I got to have a huge opening <laughs> for curiosity be in curiosity be in wonder be in awe about all the different ways that we can connect all the different ways that we can explore you know be curious about these things like crystals i remember the very first time that i saw a crystal i didn't had never seen a crystal i didn't know about crystals i didn't know about the energy of connecting to the crystal realm until I saw one and it was through my counselor at the time. I had the privilege of being able to do one-on-one -on -one sessions with her in her home. That was the way that she was doing counseling and she was a licensed therapist. So it, you know, it was like, great. You know, I met her. She was actually my counselor in treatment when I went to an alcoholism uh, treatment center then she branched off and got her own practice and I got to go to her home. And when I walked into her home, she had this glass case with all these pretty shiny objects in them. And I latched on to somewhere I have it. I don't know exactly where it is, but I have the very first crystal I ever got. And it was the one that spoke to me in her case. And, and I said, Oh, what are those? And I pointed to her case and she goes, oh, honey, those are crystals. And I said, what is that? What does that mean? What's a crystal? And she, so she pulled one out and she said, here, why don't you hold it? And so I held it. Well, I was stricken. I was captivated. I was like, oh, this feels good. This is neat. 
right? I didn't know anything about what the power of these magical objects was, but something happened when I held that crystal in my hand. It was a quartz crystal. It was a quartz crystal dome, if you will, or a tower. There's another tower. This is a selenite tower. Um, there's a word for this. I call it a tower, but there's a word for the shape of the crystal that I was holding. Anyway, what I noticed as I looked, brought it up to the light is that I saw rainbows within this, this shape. I was like, wow, that's really amazing. This is really cool, right? Didn't really know what to do from there with this. But that was my first beginning. And from there, my world just opened up to be able to explore all these different things. And once again, the magic of this particular hour of power, <laughs> when I'm able to open to what wants to come through, is that the wisdom just shows up. So hopefully the wisdom has shown up for you in this hour of power. And this is what I know to be true. Is that wherever you are right now, if you're in a mess, if you're in this cocoon stage of the butterfly journey, stay where you are. Honor where you are. Love where you are. Allow where you are. If you're if you're being if you're in the caterpillar stage where you're really close to the earth, then be there. Allow it to occur. Allow yourself to be one with the earth. Allow yourself to be immersed in the in the dirt and the waters and the 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 solidity of the earth energies. If you are, you've already broken out of your cocoon and you're flying high and you're full of color and magic and flitting around the world in your butterfly essence, be there. Wherever you are on this journey is perfect for you. Honor it. If you can't relate to the butterfly journey, but you feel like you're somewhere else, honor that. That's my key message today is be where you are. Always be where you are. Don't try and force an outcome because that will backfire on you. Let yourself be authentic. Let yourself be true to who you are. Let yourself explore where you are. Allow yourself to be supported in every step of the way. Know that you're not alone. And reach out, please. You can reach out to me here on Transformation Talk Radio, and I will get the message and connect with you. Leave them your address, your, your phone, either your phone number or your email, and I will get that message. If you can't connect there, but you want to connect to me on my website, go to B-R-I-G-H-T-B-U-T-T-E-R-F-L-Y-N-E-T-W-O-R-K.com. That's brightbutterflynetwork.com. And just connect to me. There is a contact form there. You can get on my mailing list. Uh, we can exchange information. Um, I will respond to you. Pam at brightbutterflynetwork.com and I will connect to you. Don't do life alone, folks. You are absolutely loved. I adore you and your life is up to you. And we'll see you next week with another special guest. I love you. Be well and know that you are guided. Bye-bye, folks. Thank you for listening to the Empower Me Show with Pam Bright on Transformation Talk Radio. Tune in to learn more about living a fully empowered life. Remember that your life is up to you and you can choose the spiritual path you are on. 
There is spiritual energy and wisdom in everything and everyone around you. Listen carefully for what the universe is trying to tell you in every moment. You are already being guided along your journey. Call upon your spirit guides anytime you need help with anything. Know that you are safe in every moment, even if it seems that you are not. For more information about Pam Bright, visit brightbutterflyenterprises.com or email the Empower Me Show. Thank you very much for listening. We hope to see you next week.